Okay. So, like everybody else, we have 10 minutes for the integrity um, subsystem. So, we're going to um, dive right in. Um, <clears throat> so, the Linux integrity subsystem has a number of pieces involved. Um, and there's not really a lot of time to go through all the pieces. So, we're going to um, stick with what's changed right now. Um, and there was some major work done by um, uh, Matthew Garrett on EVM. Um, EVM protects the file metadata, and IMA protects file data. So, um, <clears throat> in order to protect file data, uh, metadata, you need to include something. Uh, you have to bind the file data and the file metadata together. And originally, the way that we did this was we took something from the inode, um, the inode number, to protect, to be able to bind the two together. Um, if you take the, uh, something from the inode, that means that it's not going to be portable because it's different on every single system so that it's being installed on. So Matthew actually said, why can't we just use security.ima? as the identifier, the file hash as the identifier, and that's what he did. And so the new EVM portable um, signature allows it to be portable because it's include, but yet bind it to the um, file data. So, um, and it can only be used if there is a security.ima on the file. By making it portable, it can now be used in, um, in package managers, in any way else, in order to carry it around um, to, you know, to um, the file metadata can be included with the file data and is portable. Okay, and at the same time that he was working on this, he also, we now have signatures and um, um, he's not limited to just um, SHA-1. So we now have support for larger EVM digests, just like we do for IMA. And um, what else? Um, and he'll be giving a talk explaining um, how to tie it at um, um, LSS Europe. Um, in terms of the changes, the new features for um, IMA, we have um, there were two ways of defining policies. One is a build is the built-in policies that the few built-in policies that can be used to bootstrap your system, and then you had the <clears throat> and then they needed to be loaded at runtime um, to be actually to be provided on the boot command line, and they start from the be very beginning. Um, and then the idea was that we would transition into a custom policy and that you're starting from a fresh slate. Well, that's not how um, some of these, some of the things that distros want to be able to do. They want to know that I can, that, that I'm um, verifying a signature and that that signature is going to happen, that verification is going to happen even after a custom policy is installed. So we've now added support for a build time policy that allows you to, that will allow the distros or anyone who's building their own kernel to say, I want to verify the K exec, for example, the K exec image, um, and have that verified at runtime. And no matter what other policy gets installed later, it will also verify, um, be included in that policy. Um, the last thing that we've, um, which did not make it into 419, but is coming, is the um, ability to differentiate based on the architecture what type of verification you want based on the runtime parameters run, on the running system. For example, um, if you're in secure boot, um, then you might want to um, 
you wouldn't want k-exec load to work, the syscall, the k-exec syscall to work. But if you're not in um, secure boot mode, you would. So the idea is based on um, the architecture, um, what you want to do at runtime. So on x86, you have multiple methods of verifying the k-exec signature. And so we're not, limit, we're not saying that this has to happen all the time, but you get to decide what you want at, um, based on architecture. Okay. <clears throat> so IMA is being used, and you've heard it um, mentioned a number of times today, um, but it's mostly being based on um, in closed environments, in embedded environments. And to be able to move to a more generic kernel, we still need to close a number of gaps. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> So the biggest one was with um, iVersion. Not all file systems support iVersion, and we needed to be able to say, okay, what happens on those systems that don't support iVersion? And what happens is, is that we, can, we definitely know that if, a, if we can't detect when a file changes, then we know that we have to remeasure, reappraise, redo, we have to recalculate the hash. And so that support is now in. And then iVersion becomes just a performance improvement. If you want, if you want the performance, then either up, use a different file system that supports iVersion, add support for iVersion in that, um, for that file system. Um, and then the other example of um, not, not knowing where, when a, my, um, file changes is the fuse file system. And <clears throat> so the question is, is the file, we can determine, we can't determine anything about the file. Even if we remeasure the file, there's no guarantee that the file that the fuse file system gave us is actually what's going to be presented later when we go to use it. So do we trust and under what circumstances do we trust that the file, that the fuse file has changed or hasn't changed? So we now have unprivileged um, mounting of fuse file systems. And for those, we basically say, we don't trust that the file system is gonna give us what, um, anything the same a second time. Um, <clears throat> in the case of privileged um, mounts, um, these are kind of inverted. We're, um, the first one is saying we're, um, we'll remeasure the file um, every time that it's used because we don't know, we can't detect when it has changed. Um, and the other option, well, remeasure, reappraise, do everything again. And the other option is to say, okay, we still don't know even though it was mounted by root, we still don't know if it, the file has changed and it could give us anything that we want. And these really should be rever inverted as to which is the default and which is optional. The problem is, is that if we do that, then we're breaking all of user space. So for now, if you don't trust Fuse, then provide an, a policy that says fails safely on the boot command line. So <clears throat> there, were, there are a couple of problems that have been um, around, and the, the biggest one was that, um, that's, that we reuse the iMutex, the global iMutex, and at the same time, XFS um, also decided all of a sudden to drop their own um, local one and to use the kernel one. So we basically, there was a, lo um, a locking error. Um, that has been 
um, Dimitri Kazakin reintroduced our own um, I'm a mutex, our own locking, and, and so that problem is now resolved. The TPM performance has, has improved tremendously. Um, the first thing that we did a couple of years ago now is that we, <clears throat> we went from M-sleep to the HR timer and that improved um, the TPM performance. But this year, um, further work has been done by Nana, um, um, and, we, and she's getting about a 83% performance improvement. Um, and my colleague Stefan has, with, with, the SC, um, with the audit people here, with Paul's help and others' help, has disambiguated some of the audit um, records. And so now, as soon as the auditing um, IDs are up there, we'll start to be able to do the na um, namespacing and the first, the IMA namespacing and the first one will be based on audit. So <clears throat> there's IMA audit, and that will be probably the first namespace, IMA namespacing. Um, <clears throat> so thank you, Peter. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he did a lot of work on the IMA measurement testing tool, um, test that's in LTP. And it's now, um, it hasn't, hadn't been refreshed in quite a while. Um, and so that, ha that work has been upstreamed. Um, David Jacobson worked with, um, with, worked with our team in writing, starting to write a regression testing framework for IMA. Um, like EVM, it's in the IMA, it will be in the IMA EVM utils. It needs some review. Um, but that is going, that's going to happen. And the purpose of it is so that we can have a standalone um, test suite, just like Casey was saying, having test suites and regression testing. And this is, um, is really important um, so that others aren't, other parts of the kernel aren't breaking it and everybody can do their own regression testing. Um, <clears throat> And it's meant to be used directly on the running kernel. Um, and patches, once it does, um, once it is upstreamed, it'll be included in IMA EVM utils. And then um, the XFS um, introduction and usage of that will be upstreamed as well. Um, and I assume that an equivalent one for LTP will be upstreamed. Um, These are all the things that are in progress that are being that were mentioned today. Some of them, some of the talks will be um, given at LSS Europe that were in, um, that are not being given here. Um, the one that <clears throat> um, that that will be at is a, that's being given at LSS Europe is about the um, measurement list and how to protect the measurement list. Um, that addresses the IMA measurement list. But and lastly, how to help. Um, we need more people to be reviewing patches. We have people that are, re are posting patches that don't review other people's patches. Um, and we could definitely use some help with getting some more reviews. And those that are posting patches should be reviewing patches too to help the community. Um, <clears throat> the other aspect of this is that we need more people to be saying what is appropriate for IMA. IMA is being taken in multiple different directions. Everybody wants to do something with it. And the question is, is this appropriate? And there needs to be more of a discussion rather than just me saying, answering that question. Um, and yeah, for those that want to help with policies, um, we're looking for sample policies that can be used um, and to include them. And lastly, new functions, new features are being upstreamed and 
please think about um, signature, that everything that gets upstreamed should require, um, there should be ways of not breaking IMA and don't introduce new measurement, new measurement appraisal, other types of gaps. Thank you. Um, there's been a lot of, um, <clears throat> for the work, the automated testing work, for the minor bug fixes, they're not minor, but not included in the whole list of what was upstreamed. And the help um, for um, the SSL help um, and other packaging issues that we had with IMA EVM utils. I just had one comment. I was thinking if you're looking for input on um, where to take the integrity subsystem apart, as well as here, maybe pr submit a proposal for a microconf to the plumbers, uh, plumbers conference might be, Linux plumbers might be useful to get people, because we've had successful things with TPM in the past. Right. Yeah, getting uh, user land and distro folk involved. Any questions? Thanks, Thank you.